another top five board gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject that a lot of people tend to feel and really need some help with, especially around this time of year. We just came out of the holidays, which tends to make people really sad, and now mid-February, uh, especially for people like me who don't have anyone special in their lives for any in any real way, shape, or form, it becomes really, really disheartening, and we're just sort of like, bleh. And you know, you just sort of want to like melt into a pile of Danny and just sort of sit on the floor. Well, maybe you don't want to melt into a pile of Danny because your name is not Danny. Maybe your name is Ron or Greg or, you know, Elise. I don't know what your name is. But either way, you're just sort of like meh and you don't want to do anything. So today I'm going to be talking about games that I really enjoy because they cheer me up. Whenever I'm really sad, then I can reach for these games and I can just be like, awesome. Now I feel at least a little bit better whether it's because I really enjoy the humor of a game or because I can just sit there and like kind of focus for a little bit about something else. I mean, really you can do that with any game, but what I wanted to do with these was somewhat specific because I wanted to avoid games that really make you take a loss very, very heartedly. So a good example of this is Hive. Hive is a really great game. It's tremendously fun strategy and it has really amazing um, decision making skills that you need to develop. And again, it's a game where as you're playing it, then you're just like, you know, you're very focused and, you know, you're really uh, paying attention to what you're doing. So you're sort of blocking out anything else. The problem is that you have a very distinct win and loss because you've only got two players. So I wanted to go with games that you can play with uh, at least substantially more players, uh, games that have a lot of humor that I personally enjoy at least. Uh, and again, this is, this is one of these other lists that is very, very personal to me. Obviously all of my lists are, but this one in particular because I talk a lot about humor in games. And the thing is that my humor I know is not the same as everybody's humor. So uh, again, uh, what I wanted to do is go with games that are relatively simple because you don't want to be, you know, too far into it and you don't want to be essentially stressing out about uh, what you're trying, what's trying to make you happy or what you're trying to get happy with. Um, the other thing is I, I wanted to avoid games that, uh, that really made you feel the weight of losing them because there are certainly a lot of games like that. So what you're going to see here are games that are relatively quick really fun to play, have a distinctive type of humor that really appeals to me personally, and who knows, maybe they do to you. But either way, without further ado, we're gonna get down with my number five. And number five, I've got a game that I do not believe I have ever talked about before. It's from one of my favorite publishers, though, Steve Jackson Games. So you know right away that this is a game that is all about the funny. The game itself is Car Wars, the car game. In this game, you are essentially playing Mad Max. And that means that you are building like a destructo car and just going around blowing up everybody else's cars with like missiles and machine guns. I mean, for crying out loud, just look at the box art. Like seriously, how can you not like be all up on this game and be like, Woo! you know, that's, that is like the only emotion that I feel when I play this game is, Woo! <laughs> If that can be called an emotion, it doesn't matter. It's tremendously fun. It's a really, really cool little game. But that's uh, that's part of why it's lower on the list is because it is a relatively small game. I know I said that uh, these are all going to be pretty small games, but uh, I, uh, one of the things is that this is this is a game that is relatively specific as far as the people who would enjoy it in the context of this game is making me like genuinely happy and I'm laughing my head off about it. I am one of those relatively rare people who does that. Uh, a lot of people that I played this game with are somewhat serious about it, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, this is like Far Cry Blood Dragon meets Mad Max. You know, it. How, how can you take it seriously? It makes no sense. But either way, it's a really fun game. It's a, it's got, it's got humor if you know how to look for it, I guess is the best way to put it. Car Wars, the card game, my number five. I've got a game that 
that's not so much about humor as a lot of these other games are, but more about how this, this game really makes you feel, because this appeals to me as a person. It's something that I really enjoy doing and that, you know, makes, makes me feel like I'm doing some good because, you know, I don't like going outside, mostly. Either way, the game itself is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Now, there are a couple of great things about this game that really solidify it for me as a game that I can play when I'm somewhat sad. First off, it's a co-op game. So that means that you take away the idea of winning and losing uh, to the extent of you are a team, so you either win together or you lose together. Regardless, I always have fun with this game. It's always a great experience. The other thing, is the whole point is that it's about fire rescue. You are trying to help people, and that is one thing about me. Like I, I really like helping people. I am I. I describe myself as a kind, generous person. Most people who I talk to and who would hopefully consider me a friend would describe me as that as well. And with a game like this, like I, I feel like I'm doing good. It's kind of weird in the sense that I know I'm playing a game, but at the same time, I like I know I'm I'm doing a good thing. You can make a similar argument for something like Defenders of the Realm or Shadows Over Camelot, where it's like I am fighting for good. I am doing a good thing. Go me. I am Danny, the super awesome. Uh, but in this case, you know, it's it's more grounded in reality because we're talking about firemen and firewomen as well. And, you know, it's it's something that we can all really have a better grasp on. And after playing this, it just, again, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel uh, like essentially like a good person. Now, is that a really lofty thing to say about a game? Yes, it is. But at the same time, it is how I feel. And it, and this is a great example of a game that can do that for me personally. And like, I, I, just, I just feel better after playing this game in particular. But regardless, Flashpoint Fire Rescue is my number four. I've got a game that is neither really humorous nor is it necessarily about the particular actions that you're taking but in this case it's more about the theme and uh, it's almost like a, a cartoony type of thing that just sort of takes me back like to childhood and you know like simpler times and that kind of thing just with the artwork that's really what this game is about in particular the game itself is Takenoko for those of you who have not played this the whole point of this game is that you were growing bamboo to feed the pandas. Come on! How can you not love that? You're feeding adorable little pandas! Like, 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 like a third of the viral videos on the internet are about pandas in some way, shape, or form. Well, okay, not that many, but they're, 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 there's a lot of pandas in viral videos because they're so adorable. And the whole point of this game is you're trying to feed them. They're hungry and they want some bamboo. Like, it's, I mean, come on, guys. Come on, right? This is a great little game. It does have some nice strategy to it, but it's not really heavy. It's a really light game, very, very easy to play, relatively quick to play as well, super easy to teach. It has very few components, but again, it does have a very good decision-making component to it. It does have a very good elements of strategy to it. And again, just take a look, uh, just looking at the box art, you can see the aesthetic for this game really does have that sort of cartoony, almost childlike feel to it. And again, for me personally, I really like that. It's something that I, I enjoy seeing, again, a, as a game that really cheers me up. I like to see cartoonish things. I'm one of those people who really loves this cell shading of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I thought that it was great. And... You know, it just, it just made me happy to see that kind of thing. Same thing with Takenoko. Seeing this art style is just sort of like, oh, that's fun. It, like, it just, it just happifies me. Happifies, I don't know. It makes me happy. Either way, that's the point. But uh, again, the premise of the game is absolutely adorable. The artwork is cartoonish, but clever and also very appropriate for the theme. The game itself, really, I mean, it's easy to play. You don't have to focus too, too much on it, but you're still able to be like, okay, I'm playing this game. I can think about what to do. And you can still get rid of, you know, whatever happens to be bothering you. Takenoko is my number three. And number 
number two, I have a game that is probably the most literal interpretation of games to cheer you up that I have on this entire list. It's a game that I know I have never ever talked about, but it's a really cool pseudo party game called Smiley Face. I mean, what else do I have to say? It's a game called Smiley Face, and you are playing cards that are essentially emoji. This is emoji the card game. Like, I mean, come on. It's got a card with a monkey face on it. Like, seriously, how can you not love that? How can it not be the most adorable thing you have ever seen in your entire life, ever, in the history of everything? It's a great, great little card game that is really fun to play. Again, very, very simple. It has sort of a party atmosphere to it. You, you can make it as social as you want, which can, which can be either nice or, or not nice. I mean, and that's, that's, that's the good thing about the social aspect of this is you don't necessarily have to have a very distinctive social, um, like, pack. For it, in order in order to get uh, get fun out of it. So you know whether you feel like talking to your friends or don't feel like talking to your friends, this game can work. This this game can work for you. Again, very very simple card game. You're just you know you're going around playing your cards in in turn order essentially. Um, it's got enough strategy that it keeps you interested, but it doesn't bog you down. Again, just like all the other games on this list, that's really the whole point. I don't want to get bogged down because you know then I'm just gonna be much more overwhelmed than I was before. I just want to play these games so that I can take my mind off of things. You know, just get something that keeps my mind busy enough that I can forget about the bad things and just focus on, you know, smiley face. Cause, cause, cause smile. It's got a monkey. It's a monkey. I mean, it also has crying faces, but, 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 but mostly it has a monkey. So that's all that you really need to know. Smiley face has a monkey. My number two. a game that may or may not surprise you guys depending on how long you watch my videos. I have talked about this game in essentially a single context which is there's a whole lot of it and it's really really funny and that is Munchkin. Now in this particular case I'm talking about Munchkin the card game not necessarily the board game. For me personally if I'm talking about you know trying to cheer myself up I don't want to immediately reach for the board game because it can take a really long time it can get like sort of bogged down and you're just sort of like uh when is this over? At the same time, the card game can have a similar effect where, you know, you can have really good starting cards. You can also have really terrible starting cards. And, you know, so you can have a sort of imbalance within the game. But at the same time, for me, Munchkin is all about the humor. Whenever I play it, I'm always laughing because it's so ridiculous. It's so hilarious. It's just tremendously fun. I absolutely adore this game. It always, always takes my mind off of whatever it was I'm thinking of. And again, this is another Steve Jackson game, just like Car, car Wars. The car, I, I keep trying to, th I keep thinking Card Wars, but it's Car Wars the Card Game. Blah, 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 blah. Either way, Munchkin is, um, this is, this is one of these games where depends on your humor, depends on what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, but at the same time, Regardless of what you like, there is probably a Munchkin iteration out there that will appeal to you. Whether you're a fan of sci-fi or kung fu movies or old western movies or vampires and werewolves or spy movies or Cthulhu or zombies or blah, 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 all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I know I, I only mentioned like a third of the actual Munchkin things that are out there and available. But for me personally, this is a tremendously fun little game. Yes, it can be frustrating and sometimes it does frustrate me, but the humor of it and the fun of this game far outweighs any frustration that I feel. And I always feel better after playing this game, even if I get completely trounced than I did whenever I started. Munchkin the card game, my number one.
So that's it for me, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this video of my top five games that I personally really enjoy playing when I'm feeling a bit blue. And these are games that really tend to cheer me up. Again, I know that this is something that is very, very personal. It's something that is really all about me because I know for sure that even if you like Munchkin, even if you like uh, the, the, I don't even remember what else I had on the list. Even if you like something like Takenoko, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's really going to cheer you up. And I completely understand that, so don't worry. But with that, as always, I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Where do you guys turn whenever you're feeling blue? Like, again, especially around this time of year, because we need this. We need these little pick-me-ups every once in a while. But especially now, it's just like, uh, why? Why? And so I, I really want to see, like, I really want to know and hear what's going on with you guys. Well, not necessarily what's going on with you guys, but what, what do you guys like to, to see in a board game that cheers you up? Do you like to see humor? Do you like to see something that's just, like, really small and quick? Do you like something that's almost childish? I mean, you know, what, what do you guys enjoy? I, I would just... I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear what y'all's opinion is on this, obviously. But with that, I hope that you guys have a very, very great uh, holiday or, well, holiday, Valentine's Day. <laughs> Uh, but I hope that um, you never have to use this list in the context to which it is intended, which is really to cheer people up who are sad. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, it happens to us, but I hope that it doesn't happen to you to the extent that you really need to see it so that you can try to help yourself. But with that, thank you very, very much. Always go out, play the games that you enjoy, have a wonderful time doing it, and I will see you next time. Thank you again, everybody, for watching my top five favorite games that cheer you up. Again, I know that this time of year, as well as the last couple of months, can be pretty hard, but I hope that this helps you to get through it, or at the very least, you found some other way to do it by yourself. That would be even better. But that said, as always, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Do you like the games I pick? Do you have specific games that you always reach for? What are your ways to cheer up when you are feeling blue? I would love to hear it all. That said, as always, I've got several of my playlists linked up at the top of the page, and you can click that big giant subscribe button so that you can see more of me in the future. Thank you very much again for being here, and happy Deadpool Day weekend.